double or even triple the FPS of any game with the click of a button. This is the dream app we've all been waiting for, and in this video, I'm going to break down how lossless scaling frame gen works. I'll then show how you can use LSFG to not only double your frame rate, like FSR or DLSS frame gen, but go one step further by tripling your FPS to hit high frame rate targets. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like my video breakdowns, and let's get right into it. Lossless Scaling, or LS, is a Steam app released by developer THS in 2018. Originally, LS was designed to upscale games, and over the years they've added AMD FSR, NVIDIA Image Scaling NIS, and even their own AI upscaler called LS1. These features are useful for games such as Helldivers 2 that have either bad upscaling or none built in. While this step is useful for increasing your frame rate, FrameGen will take it to the next level by multiplying your FPS 2x or 3x. In order to understand how LSFG works, consider this. Most smart TVs these days can display content at 120 or even 240 hertz. However, TV and movie content is usually shot at 24 or 30 FPS. Stick with me, I promise I'm going somewhere with this. The TV manufacturers use clever tricks they call motion rate, clear action, or something similar. This is a form of motion estimation called optical flow. This was first used in video editing back in 2008 with a plugin called Twixter. Through the use of clever algorithms, it becomes possible to interpolate frame A to C, creating between 1 to 5 extra frames between them. This can look decent in certain content, but a lot of times creates obtrusive motion artifacts. This is where AI comes in. Introduced two years ago for the RTX 40 series, DLSS FrameGen uses training data as well as a game's motion vectors to predict what frame B should look like. Using a highly optimized AI will yield great results and run very fast to keep the input lag down. But there's a problem. What if you don't have a 40 series GPU? Most games don't even have frame gen. So what then? Lossless scaling frame gen, or LSFG, is where we can bridge the gap. This AI solution does not require the use of motion vectors. According to developer THS, it can run on graphics cards even as old as the GTX 900 series. With LSFG, any windowed program can suddenly run at double or even triple its frame rate. Finally, high frame rate gaming is within reach for low powered systems. But what's the catch? Let's run a few comparisons so you can be the judge. THS recommends a base frame rate of 30 FPS for 1080p and 40 FPS for 1440p. But for the sake of curiosity, let's see what happens when we break this rule and interpolate 20 FPS up to 60. Uh, okay, not good. The motion artifacts are pretty bad, and whenever I swing the camera around, it's a blurry mess. But this isn't what LSFG was meant for. Let's try doubling 30 FPS. Giving LS 50% more frames to work with yields a pretty good result. There are still motion artifacts for sure, but they're much less intrusive. The input lag surprisingly doesn't feel bad either. So, given the choice, I would definitely choose 60 FPS interpolated over being stuck with 30. What do you think? Now, let's try high frame rate. Unfortunately, the only way to show this on YouTube is by playing the footage at half speed. Capping at 40 FPS and using LSFG to triple it up to 120, we're getting pretty decent results. You can see some interpolation artifacts on the Helldiver's shadow and around HUD elements. However, compared to doubling 30 FPS, there's overall less artifacting. If you could see this at full speed, it's a very respectable result. The input lag also feels better with the base frame rate now 33% higher. 
One thing to mention, if you have a VRR monitor, you could instead double 40 FPS to reduce these motion distortions. So it's your choice whether you prefer a higher frame rate or temporal stability. Of course, the best option would be taking the base frame rate higher to 60 FPS. There's still going to be some distortions around the edges, but at full speed, we're getting to the point where it's harder to notice. This is incredible. Trying to hit 120 FPS in a poorly optimized game like this without frame gen would have required turning down the game's resolution and cutting back a lot of settings. This is why so many people, myself included, are so excited about this app. It's opening up possibilities for more gamers, like higher settings, ray tracing at high frame rates, smoother gameplay on handheld PCs. <laughs> I could go on, but let's finish off this video with the final test. Let's do a slow pan comparing base 40 versus 60 FPS. The artifacting for 60 is so minuscule, it makes me wonder how good this would look in racing games. But I'll leave that for another time. I hope this video comparison for LSFG was informative and gives you some ideas on what options to use in your games. As always, I'd like to thank my super subscriber, Jordan. If you'd like to support the channel to help make content like this possible, consider becoming a channel member as well. You'll get early access to videos, loyalty badges, and more. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. You have ignited the torches of liberty. Extraction awaits. Get off! Get off! Yeah, I'm